Thank you. So, the web is, I will assert, not very Pythonic, and it's also notoriously really difficult to program for. Are these two problems related? Could we actually make the web a better platform by making it more Pythonic? Well, firstly, what do I mean by the web is not very Pythonic? Well, if you're making a typical web app, your data is going to have to be a bunch of different shapes on the way. It's going to start out usually as data within a, a tables in a database, which you access by SQL. You're then going to have to turn that into objects, usually Python objects, on your server, which then have methods and attributes of their own. Uh, you're then going to have to represent this in JSON with a whole bunch of REST endpoints to access and uh, manipulate them, uh, send that over HTTP, where your JavaScript is going to turn these HTTP requests into objects in JavaScript with their own methods, and then you have to turn those into HTML DOM objects, and then somehow render those into the pixels on the screen. At every level, every one of these transitions has a whole bunch of boring and repetitive and tedious translation work. And that is an invitation to exactly the wrong sort of magic. So let me take a completely unfair pot shot at SQL Alchemy, which is a library for translating uh, data in databases with SQL into Python objects. Uh, it's actually really good at it, which is why this is an unfair pot shot. You can even write query expressions like this, right? You know, book.price is less than 20. That's nice. But of course, the process from getting from that expression into SQL we can run on the database is black magic. It's it got meta classes. It's got overloading Python standard operators to do something completely different to what they normally do. And that's cool if you do it once. But if you have this amount of magic at every level in your stack, you are in for a bad day. And of course you do, right? You have ORMs to turn database tables into server objects. You have REST frameworks to try and help you express those server objects in JSON. You have JavaScript frameworks that turn these patterns of HTTP requests into JavaScript objects. You have templating engines that turn these JavaScript objects into the DOM. And you have CSS frameworks to help you turn this DOM into the pixels you want on the screen. Well, how does that stack up against PEP20, the Zen of Python? There should be one and preferably only one way to do it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Explicit is better than implicit. Well, all of these frameworks are implicit by their very nature. It's the only way they can save you that work. And if the implementation is hard to explain, it's a bad idea, look at all the magic at all these levels in the stack. OK. so. If the normal web stack is so unpythonic, what would a more Pythonic version look like? Well, Python everywhere, maybe? Uh, so in Anvil, we do this by having Python code and Python objects everywhere. Even on the client, we use the Sculpt Python to JavaScript uh, compiler for the client side code. Check it out, it's great. So if we're looking at this stack, if we were working all in Python, if we were making a REST request, we'd make a function call to the requests library. And then after some long time, that would emerge as a function call to a Flask endpoint. Well, if all we wanted was a function call, why not make the function call the abstraction, right? So that's what we do. We take a function on the server. We tag it, hey, you can call this from the client. And then we can make this a function call where from the client uh, through to the server. We can have all the normal Python arguments, keyword arguments, and return values. And it's an awful lot nicer. OK, so what kind of value should we be able to pass in as these arguments or return out? Well, I mean, strings, dicks, lists, anything that you can do in JSON, obviously. But we want objects from as far down this stack as we can get away with. Uh, but unfortunately, it's a web server. So this bottom of this stack needs to be stateless uh, because it's serving a lot of clients. It can't afford to hold all the objects in RAM. So we say we're going to support stateless objects. And stateless object, anything with an immutable ID, some list of methods, and maybe some permissions. And a good use case for this are database rows, right? The ID is the unique ID of that database row. We have methods like update, delete, and if we, it's Python, so if we implement get item and set item, we've now got square bracket dictionary style indexing on our database rows. Uh, obviously, we don't want anyone to do arbitrary uh, calls on database rows from the client, so we have signatures so they can only make calls on uh, objects that the server has already returned to them, uh, which is a fairly nice interface for security purposes. So what we end up with is a process where we can have 
an object in the database, a row in the database, and then return that straight from a function call in the server straight to the client, and the same object we can index it in client code. And that it, so that's one object passed all the way from the database to the client. So we've skipped a whole bunch of these layers. And that's our little contribution to making the web more Pythonic. Thank you very much.